Hi, everybody. So excited for this month's book club. Reading Brain Rules by Dr. John Medina. This was a very lengthy book, um, but it was super cool. It was so much really good information. Um, and I took a ton of notes in it. So I'm going to try to be as concise as I possibly can. But I highly recommend this book. It was really easy to read because it had it didn't have a ton of research. They pull all of that information out of the book and they just gave you the really conversational part of it. Uh, but it's based on 12 brain rules, so it's very basic. And it basically includes the research and the science uh, behind it. So, and with lots of ideas to how to apply that to your everyday life. Clearly, you're not gonna do everything the book have said, but when I finished this book, I was like, if I just implemented one thing that I learned, I probably would Im improve my brain functions by a lot. So um, I would recommend reading it and then just maybe, you know, rereading it, uh, you know, in a few years again, so you can learn something new and then applying different things. So it, you know, so your life improves. But uh, some of the basic things about brain rules is like our brain is wired for survival and we should exercise and sleep and have less stress. <laughs> like we didn't already know that. Uh, everybody's brain wiring can be different. Attention is really difficult because there's so much distraction going on and therefore we're having a hard time remembering things. Uh, sensory integration really helps with remembering things and that's like using multiple sensories uh, to remember. Vision is the most powerful of all of our senses. Uh, music can help with remembering things. Uh, men and women have different brains. Not an argument. <laughs> Either way, it's just a science fact. Uh, and we should explore more. Uh, we don't spend enough time just kind of hanging out, thinking, relaxing. Uh, and it's really funny because after I read this book, I used to spend a lot of time in my car just listening to podcasts or listening to books or always consuming thinking information. And I've decided that I would consume some information when I'm driving to work in the morning, which is like when my brain is most likely able to learn new things. But in the afternoon when I come home from wherever I'm going, I normally don't even have the radio on. I just let my brain just kind of wander through, you know, driving and being in traffic or whatever it is that I'm doing. And I have to say, I have come up with some really good ideas and thoughts about organizing. Uh, I've come up with some good topics for a book. I came up with an awesome website the other day that I probably would have never thought about if I didn't let my brain just explore the possibilities. So I've become a really fan of exploration here. Uh, so I'm wondering how are you not letting your brain explore and how could that be beneficial to you? I know a lot of uh, entrepreneurs or people that are self-employed and that can be a huge benefit to our business if we just give it enough time to think about the possibilities. So this brain was really, um, this brain, <laughs> this book was really brain intense and there was a lot of information. And for the sake of just like the book club, I'm going to give you the highlights. But once again, I highly recommend reading this book just because there's so much really good information for just about everybody. As long as you have a brain, it's a good book, right? So I think item number two was exercise. And he talked about um, how just walking 12 miles a day could significantly improve um, the possibility of having Alzheimer's and I thought that was pretty fascinating and he didn't even say like walking 12 miles every single day he just said constantly walking uh, aerobics exercise a couple of times a week was just really what he recommended and I was thinking like organizing go, going up and down the stairs really qualifies for that so if you're not you know, in the mood to go to the gym, like how, what is a way that you maybe can just exercise in your own home by taking stuff up and down the stairs? That might be a good way to get your brain juices going. Uh, step number three was sleep. And I think we are uh, chronic, chronically insomniacs. Uh, I sometimes I do wake up in the middle of the night 
and uh, what is the one thing we all do we go on our Facebook and I'm always surprised how many people are awake at 3 o'clock in the morning so what is it that we're doing to get better sleep right I just recently started meditating uh, and that has really helped with like calming down my brain and so I can get better sleep but um, we are definitely not getting enough sleep but he talked about something really interesting that I've been reading a lot about lately and those are chronotypes and chronotypes is basically the study of circadian rhythms and how they are different in different we all have a different circadian rhythm and so we are like wired and trained to believe that everybody should go to sleep between you know uh, I go to sleep really early but that we should be in bed by 10 p.m. and that we should get up early uh, you know the early bird gets the warm kind of a thing but that's not necessarily true right and your circadian rhythm is not wired to be that way you may not be getting enough sleep because you're not sleeping when you should be sleeping he talks a little bit about that I have another book that's coming up on the on the book club that is the power of when and in that book he basically that's all he talks about when we should be doing things uh, and how important that is so he talked about that in this book and he talks about there are three types of chronotypes in his book uh, and they all had different sleep patterns so it's very important to know when should you really be going to sleep and when should you really be waking up um, and that's not something that I think people really consider a lot so um, sleep more people I know sometimes people say that to me they're like you're just saying that because you don't have kids you don't know how hard it is not to get sleep but he also talked about napping right and if we can just get a couple of minutes nap in the afternoon we should just let our body do what it needs to do uh, and that may be helpful so no hate mail over the sleep I get it um, but how is it that you may be able to accommodate uh, over the fact that you're not getting as enough sleep and how may you be able to make a few changes right uh, to be able to sleep more that may be important our brains don't work and learn well during stress something you probably already knew uh, there's a concept of learned helplessness that's been happening and I think that um, there's a lot of studies being done around that and how um, we have learned to believe and I see that a lot in my clients like we have learned to believe that I am never gonna be organized and there's nothing I can do to make me more organized and then there's this anxiety and feeling that I'm forever gonna be disorganized and I believe that's wrong I believed that with some good structure good techniques good accountability that everybody can be more organized so uh, he talked about that which you know I think stress can be compounded by a, a multitude of things and the more stress you have the more stress you become uh, so that can be you know one of those spinny wheels that it's very difficult to get out of and I don't know that I have a, a real good answer for it but is just definitely stress has an impact on our brains and we already knew we should be aware of it so uh, he talked about brain wiring and basically what he said every brain is wired differently and I think we specialize in working with clients with brain-based conditions so the majority of our clients um, have ADD ADHD OCD and a bit of hoarding tendencies so we kind of knew that brain wiring is definitely has an impact on pe how people learn and you just reassured that um, attention is a really big deal we don't pay attention to things that are boring <laughs> I totally agree with that but we are so overwhelmed by all of the distractions coming at us every single day uh, I was telling a funny story the other day I was invited to a Facebook live interview and before my interview I wanted to go and see what she'd been up to just so we could have like a good personal conversation and of course while I was researching what she was doing I just ended up on all sorts of different links and website and things she had been doing and things she had posted and articles that she had read and before you know it like two hours went by really fast and I was about to do my interview and I just felt like oh my god I'm just still not prepared for it so paying attention and being distracted happens so easily to all of us just because there's so much coming at us at no time in history have we, we have had the availability of the information that we have today uh, through our smartphones, through the internet, through all sorts of mediums that just come to us. So 
you know, sometimes you just have to say no, and sometimes you just have to turn things off, and sometimes you just have to be much more conscious of what you're doing. Uh, I've been actually putting my phone on airplane mode now when I'm working on big projects and just letting all of this stuff not come through my my phone and my voicemail and just letting it be off for a couple of hours and just really trying to focus a lot more because otherwise you get super distracted by that stuff. Memory. He recommends repeating to remember and I'm such a huge fan of that because sometimes I go all the way downstairs and I'm like, I'm going to get a snack. And I walk all the way down there and I'm like, why am I here? What, what was I doing? And so now I'm like, as I'm walking down the stairs, I say, I'm going to go get a snack. I'm going to get a snack. <laughs> I'm going to get a snack. So when I get downstairs, I remember why I went downstairs, right? So I think a lot of my clients have a hard time remembering things. So I highly recommend trying that. Repeat, repeat whatever you're going to do until you get there and get it done. And that may help you not be wondering or walking back up and down the stairs to figure out, what was I downstairs to do to begin with? So, um, uh, he talks about sensory integration and smell is one of the most powerful senses. However, vision trumps them all. So whenever you're learning something, um, you know, incorporating senses of smell or really learning visually. I remember when I was in college, um, I would write a lot on a whiteboard of what I was learning and I visually you know especially um, when I first went to college I was a nursing student and there was a lot of math and science and formulas and so I would write those on the board and the more I wrote them the more I remembered them and the easier they became to me um, so which is one of the reasons why we label a lot when we're working with our clients and we recommend labels that are bigger, more defined, and things that are definitely easier to understand. Otherwise, you know, your vision triggers your brain way faster than remembering what is it that's going to go into that bin, right? Sometimes I do work with people and they're like, well, I don't need labels. And I'm, the truth is, is that we all need labels. So if you are working on a project around your house and you're doing something that's brand new, labeling may help not just you, but everybody else. Um, remember what's happening there so uh hence a picture is worth a thousand words right we can see something we are much more likely to remember it uh, he also talked about listening to music to boost your cognition uh, i find that also listening listening to music helps with distraction because my brain brain is kind of focused on something i already know and it's not distracted by the dinghy or things that may be happening around me. So uh, sometimes I have had success working with clients that have ADHD to listen to music in order to be able to um, focus on other things. So I would recommend trying that. Like I said, he talks about how males and females brains are different. Not a big discussion, it's just a matter of science. Um, and then he talked about the exploration, which I thought it was pretty cool that we are all natural explorers and we should allow time to wonder and explore and let our brains process the info that we have been learning, uh, you know, daydreaming can be a good thing. So anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with us during our book club. We highly recommend this book by Dr. John Medina, Brain Rules. I am Chris Scrott Whittleton with Organizing Maniacs, and you can find us at organizingmaniacs.com. I look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks. Have an awesome day. Bye.